Whether you're going across town or across country, we want you to stay safe this summer. Yeah, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has found that despite fewer drivers on the roads last year, there was a sharp increase in the number of people killed who were not wearing seatbelts. Tony has more in today's Behind the Wheel. If you're in a car crash and you aren't wearing a seat belt, there are two collisions. First, the car hits the object. Then, a split second later, you hit the car. The facts are undeniable. Seat belts can prevent that second collision. There's no doubt at all that seat belts save lives. States first began enforcing mandatory seat belt laws back in the mid 1980s. At that time, only 14% of the US population was buckling up. These headlines from the New York Times in 1985 and 1986 show how states wrestled with the issue of requiring drivers to wear seatbelts. Eventually, through education and enforcement, the benefits became clear. If you're in a crash, you have about a 50% chance of not being injured or dying just by buckling up. Last year, about 90% of U.S. drivers wore seatbelts, but that was actually down slightly from the year before. And in Oregon, we continued a downward trend, going from 95% to 94%. 95%, 94% still sounds great, but we've dropped from a high that we had back in 2013 of about 98%. And as fewer people wear seatbelts, more of them are dying in crashes, 15% more just last year. That statistic is truly alarming to those of us who work day in and day out in traffic safety. Even with all of the safety technology packed into modern cars, none of it can match the benefit of a properly worn seatbelt. Automatic cruise control, automatic emergency braking, lane keep assist, all of these things are designed to help us. But unfortunately, there's not an advanced driver assistance system that can buckle your seatbelt for you. Over the years, automakers have tried to force the issue by preventing cars from starting until seatbelts are fastened, but that's never gone over well. So for now, our best protection is the sound of a beep or our own common sense. I'm Tony Martinez, Fox 12, Oregon. You know what else is a great way to remember about the seatbelt is to have a kid in the car because kids will tell yeah. you. Oh, yeah. That's when I really, I think, crossed over because I was like my mid 20s and the early 80s, true confession. Yeah. Uh, and I remember sometimes not driving with the seatbelt. As soon as we had kids, I mean, they're like, Dad. I mean, yeah. come on. What do you yeah. <laughs> so that helped you, a lot. It's in interesting, my case. Tony, because I remember when that big campaign began in the 80s. Yeah. I was learning to drive in the 80s, and I remember that. It was just, it was a new, kind of a new concept right. that everybody should buckle up. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Really That's good information, thing. Tony. Thanks. Thanks. I still remember Driver Z, which was when I started, uh, you know, wearing mm -hmm. the seatbelt, and I got in after somebody else had driven, and uh, Mr. Stark was sitting over there, and it was a bench seat, and I had to go like that and yank yep. the seat up to reach the pedals, <laughs> and Mr. Stark's seatbelt's like, <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs>